Thank you very much, Raina. 916 is the time. Time to talk winners and losers on Wall Street with financial expert Rob Black joining us on this Wednesday morning. Rob, how's it going? What are you seeing on the markets? Um, kind of a give back day. Uh, last two days have been super up. We kind of need something real to happen, though. Everyone expects the Fed to pivot, but the Fed will pivot when the dollar is so strong that it breaks something like a European bank or when jobs get cut maybe on this Friday or a CPI consumer price inflation number drops aggressively next week or maybe when the elections are over in November. So we're waiting for something real, but we're speculating a little too soon. Um, but it's coming. OPEC today said they're going to cut production. White House might have to start like rethinking how we think about Saudi Arabia and OPEC because they're not working with the world going into a world recession in 2023. Uh, mortgage rates are at 2006 levels, 6.75 percent. Judge Aaron Judge, I watched the game last night. Go Yankees! Um, he's going to look good as a giant next year, in my ah. opinion. Um, his his home run ball worth two million plus dollars to one lucky fan who. Everyone's already been saying that he's he's already wealthy, so he should just give it back. Well, that's probably good. Do you really think he's coming to the Giants? I do. You do? I think the, I think the Giants need him. Otherwise, we're going to fall further and further behind the Dodgers and the San Diego Padres. Yeah. And, um, you know what they say, home runs put butts in seats. So, yeah. I agree. It makes and the game think San Francisco would embrace him like we embrace the Panda. People will dress up as judges. It'll be good for society. Oh, the marketing potential. I see. I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's talk quickly. Uh, one of the big stories we were talking about today is the fact that Elon Musk has done a 180 and has come yep. back to the table to say, OK, I'll go ahead and buy Twitter after all. We don't need to go through with the lawsuit. Yeah, he was going to lose about $10 billion in, in penalties to the, uh, the judge. So he did the right thing by basically going through with this. But he's paying a ridiculously high price, $44 billion. He instantly tweeted that he's going to rename the, not the, he's not going to rename the company, <clears throat> but he wants to build X, which is going to be a super app. This is the future. Yeah. Um, he's copying what WeChat does in China. Um, you can get a taxi, you can get a food, you can get tickets, you can get, you play games, and you can pay for it all with one app under one roof. So we'll see what he has to do. But um, a lot of people thought he was a fool the way yeah. he handled this whole situation, and he was a fool the way he handled the whole situation. It was a lot of unnecessary. Um yeah, entanglements with all of that. I mean, I've, Twitter okay. stock Twitter stock got a nice bump. I see that this morning uh, since the news broke yesterday. Tesla stock, though, got a bit hammered. And that's, you know, the other side of the coin is a lot of people invested in Tesla aren't too happy with this whole Twitter thing and Elon's attention being split now. Is that partly why you think that stock's going down? Yeah, um, we're learning more and more about Elon Musk, that he has kind of a bro tech culture thing going on, that he likes hanging out with billionaires, whether it's Ari Emanuel or if it's Peter Thiel. Um, how focused is he on Tesla? SpaceX is launching a big uh, launch today, sending, I think, another man crew up into space. So he's got a lot going on. And let's just put it this way. We don't want Tesla to crash and we don't want SpaceX to blow up on a mission. So we do not. pay attention to what you got to do, Elon. All right. Eye on the ball. And then lastly, let's talk a little bit about uh, holiday travel plans. I know we touched on this before about how things are getting a little more expensive. Uh, how, are, how are those numbers shaken out in people's you know, holiday shopping intentions? I'm sad to report that the economy is taking a drag on travelers. 43% um, of us are saying, you know, we're going to overnight our holiday trips between Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, and New Year's at this point in time. Um, it's big for our economy this time of year, and the high gasoline prices and high hotel prices and high airfare. Airfare is 33% higher year over year. But like, we forget this sometimes. Gasoline's up 25% year over year still. Hotels are up 4.5%. So what we're doing is we're shortening our trips. We're taking cheaper trips. We're taking fewer trips um, just to try to save money during the holiday season. And again, it's just a reminder, COVID's still kind of here. But I think now with inflation, inflation's kind of beating COVID this year as far mm. as the, the holiday drag goes. And, you know, real quickly, since we've got a little extra time, I wanted to ask you briefly, I've been following the latest with Russia and Ukraine and the counterinsurgents and, the, and all of that. There's a lot of worry that Putin could release some sort of tactical nuclear warhead. I, the ripple effects of that, because there has to be a response on the global markets, I'm worried are going to be pretty severe. Have you been following any of that or what any of the talk has been on Wall Street about that? Sure. And what I'll tell you, James, is we've done far worse. And what you just said, if Putin yeah. does this. And on Wall Street, we have a funny phrase where we go, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, so what a party would have. 
we've gone through World War One, we've gone through World War Two, we've gone through Korea, we've gone through Vietnam. Yes, with the recession coming, we're probably going to go back lower, mm. down about thirty five percent from our highs. We're right now about thirty percent on Nasdaq, about twenty five percent on the S and P five hundred. We're closer to a bottom now, and this time next year, we're going to be talking about will twenty twenty three close at record highs. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer to the bottom. Okay. All right, Rob, thank you as always. Smartest guy I know when it comes to Wall Street. We'll uh, chat with you again tomorrow. Get your comments and questions in now so he can touch on them uh, when he's back with us. Facebook, Twitter, email him directly, rob at robblack.com.